Hi, I'm Laura Diaz Anadon, a Professor of Climate Change Policy at the University of Cambridge. I'm also the Director of the Center for the Environment, Energy and Natural Resource Governance, Synergy. I'm also a research associate at the Belfer Center for Science and International Affairs at Harvard University and the lead author of the IPCC Working Group 3 on Climate Change Mitigation. My work focuses on understanding the impact that different policies have on our ability to mitigate the climate change challenge, while also trying to understand their possible impacts on competitiveness and on fairness and distributional effects. My work focuses on what governments can do to address climate change. And um, I work on three main areas. The first one is on trying to understand the impact of different policy instruments, policy approaches on our ability to uh, improve uh, low carbon energy technologies and diffuse low carbon energy technologies. So I have studied things ranging from uh, feeding tariffs, R&D policies, different types of grants, different types of partnerships. Um, I, a second strand of my work involves trying to understand the linkages between energy and other resources, including water uh, and including other materials. And finally, a third area of my work is more broadly trying to understand how policymakers can make decisions using the best scientific knowledge available while accounting for the huge uncertainty that we have in both uh, the availability of different technologies or the impacts of different policies on uh, competitiveness impacts as well as uh, distributional impacts so who benefits from different technologies and different policies. One of the big questions I've been working on for the past five years or so is on trying to understand the impact of different ways of distributing research and development funding on not just uh, the development of technologies, the creation of more efficient solar panels or cheaper batteries, for example, but also on the development of or evolution of local industries. Um, one of the most recent pieces of work in this area uh, was evaluating the impact of uh, funding known as ARPA in the United States in the energy space, ARPA-E, trying to understand the extent to which uh, this funding led to the growth and emergence of uh, startup companies. Um, so in a sense, the, one of the big questions I, I'm working on is on trying to understand at a micro level, the uh, additional value or the impact of different government programs on um, the future of different sectors. Another uh, big uh, question I'm, I'm working on is trying to understand what are the mechanisms uh, that facilitate or enable uh, knowledge spillovers. The flow of knowledge from different sectors, in, this case, in, in my case, to the energy sector. We know that technological innovation is very hard to predict. That is a very complex process. So what how a solar panel or a solid state lighting device um, evolve doesn't just depend on what happens within, let's say, the lighting industry or the battery industry, but it also leverages uh, insights and technological breakthroughs from other areas. But we know very little about how these flows of knowledge from other di disciplines or other industries take place. So one big project that I'm working on right now is trying to illuminate some of these mechanisms to help um, design uh, better uh, innovation policies, but also to help uh, improve uh, research and development management strategies. There are three main types of challenges that uh, policymakers in the energy and climate space are faced with. The first one is how to um, locate or how to uh, know about all the relevant information. As I mentioned earlier, because uh, the energy sector touches all sectors and because climate change mitigation touches all sectors uh, in our society, uh, a lot of information is relevant and often information about the impact of different policies on um, different outcomes from competitiveness to uh, the impact on opportunities for the most vulnerable or the impact on um, 
reducing other types of pollution or in ecosystems, pieces of information tend to be published in different journals. They tend to be um, uh, owned by different uh, groups of academics or different groups of experts. So it's often very hard in the timeframes that uh, policymakers are faced with. It's very hard to know where to go or what to look for. The second challenge is uh, related to the fact that there's still a lot of uncertainty or, or at least in some cases conflicting information about what we know and what we don't know. Um, uh, and this is hard to deal with and it's hard to communicate. Um, so understanding how to deal with different types of uncertainty, uh, how to use the different um, tools, different methods for managing uncertainty and when it even makes sense to use a method because sometimes the uncertainty is so large that it's hard to uh, rely on formal methods. The third challenge uh, relates to the fact that policymakers also need to understand not just how policies will affect people, but in many cases it's also essential to understand uh, what people think about those policies because they might be able to anticipate uh, an intended effects or impacts that the literature, academics uh, cannot uh, foresee. So one uh, challenge that many policymakers or analysts uh, have not been trained to deal with is how to engage with uh, stakeholders from citizens to NGOs to other groups. We're learning that they have relevant information, uh, not just information that should be considered, but also information about how they may, might react that will help communicate policies so that they can be seen as credible, legitimate, and over the long term sustainable. Because one of the things that we have learned is that we will need a sustained effort that gets ratcheted up over time. And if we don't start from the beginning uh, engaging uh, the all the relevant stakeholders, and again, this is not easy, uh, there's a lot of different ways of doing it, it's uh, less likely that we will be able to sustain and ratchet up the effort. My work with CSAP has been one of the highlights of my work uh, since I moved from Cambridge, Massachusetts to Cambridge, England. I've taken part uh, in many CSAP events. Uh, I have met with CSAP fellows on a regular basis. Uh, these have been uh, extremely useful, not just because it, um, it gave me an instant connection with a lot of relevant uh, decision makers and policy makers uh, in London and beyond, um, but also because these initial connections have led to additional interactions. I've been able to send a master's thesis, of course, with the, with the, uh, with the permission of the student to, uh, to policymakers that uh, would benefit from them. I've been able to then uh, host a range of policymakers here in Cambridge that came as a result of a meeting that started with a CISAP fellow. So I found this uh meetings uh we one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings uh with policymakers arranged by CSAP extremely uh important for connecting with people and also for trying to uh get a better sense of what are some of the pressing questions that um people are trying to um, um answer a second type of interaction uh with CSAP which has been really productive has been uh, an application that I worked on with CIPSAP to um, request funds to organize a policymaker event around some of my work on understanding the impact of different policy instruments on farm growth and competitiveness. Uh, together with CSAP, uh, we applied to host uh, this workshop. This workshop is going to uh, be held, if all goes well, in the new year. And it will be an opportunity to bring together policymakers, also other academics in the US and Germany, as well as uh, myself and, and some people in my group. And it will be an opportunity to uh, really grapple together with policymakers with some of the questions about how to best use and, and how to translate this information and knowledge into real um, policy um, action. The third uh, type of interaction I've had with CSAP has been through my participation in the uh, climate lecture series that are done jointly between CSAP and Christ College. Um, I presented uh, in uh, as part of a panel in this event and I found uh, that both 
uh, hearing the other panelists, which included policymakers, and also the questions of the really wide range of people in this event, uh, I found both the connections useful and the questions uh, stimulating. So I, I found uh, that these three, three different mechanisms were things that I hadn't really seen um, in, uh, in my previous um, roles. And they really are a highlight uh, that I often uh, uh, mention, actually, to my previous colleagues. Um, these uh, meetings with these fellows require very little uh, um, on my part, apart, you know, aside from being there and meeting with the people, but I don't need to organize anything, and that is extremely useful.